Okay, today I'm going to be installing the flip badge rear view camera uh, on a Mark V GTI. Mine's a 2007. Done a lot of research online, so I've not done this before. And for that reason, I've discovered very few videos that show you how to do it. So I'm going to try to do my best on my first video. First thing we're going to do is remove the covering inside the hatch. Uh, see a Phillips head inside each handle and we'll pull off these caps on both sides and then use a trim removal tool to pull away this whole piece and access the inside panels off. I was pretty lucky I've retained all of the clips except for one which is pretty simple. Find it here on the hatch and we're going to pull that out with some pliers and then these little feet are just going to slide right back in through there. Next step we're going to remove the plastic window trim. Select a tool and you're just going to put it inside and pop it away like that. Work your way around. We've got the window trim out. Um, you can see the angle is these clips are gonna pull outward like that. And you're gonna, because it's sitting in this frame, you're gonna wanna be careful about these clips pulling out from these slots. Next step and specific to the Mark V GTI, you're going to have to remove the rear windshield wiper which will require you to take off the arm. The reason why is you need to be able to reach this Torx and then to fit the new flip badge, there's going to be a motor on this side. So we're going to remove this leg from the wiper. You just use a Dremel or some other cutting tool and you'll just cut this leg off. And then where this stud is, we're going to cut the metal in sort of an L shape so that it will accommodate the motor. You can see the little round piece sitting like that. So it's gonna pivot out and off. Next you'll use a 13 millimeter socket to remove that nut, which I've already loosened. So we'll take that off. Next is you have the windshield wiper nozzle this should slide out. So we're gonna pull this out and then I'm gonna try and work this arm off if I can't get it by hand. Um, I'm gonna use pullers. You need to be especially careful because it's surrounded by glass and you definitely don't wanna crack that. Picked one of these up for $20. I'm gonna actually try to return it if I can keep it clean and unmarked. <laughs> but you can see you just hook each of the feet underneath. Screw this down. You can see that I put the nut back on, so I'm putting less force onto the actual nozzle for the washer fluid. You can see the thing that's gonna get stuck are the splines inside are gonna meet up with this motor. Obviously, since this is exposed to the elements, uh, dirt, water, ice, all of that will eventually get in there. I sprayed carefully with a bit of a PB Blaster and a paper towel to protect my paint. So now back under the hatch, this is your uh, washer fluid nozzle. You can see there's just a little retaining clip like this. So I'm gonna remove that, pull this guy off. A couple drops might come out, no big deal. Uh, and then you got one of your push-pull connectors. We'll do these three, pull the motor out, cut the leg off and move on to the badge. Now with this, you're going to have to remove not just the foot, but the actual arm of it. Just read there. I'll come around. See if we got enough off. Now we're going to move on to the actual badge. These are T25 Torx. So you have one, two, three. And when 
those are out, you just rotate it, slide it out. And we'll move on to cutting. From here, you can kind of see what we need to cut, right? And so it needs to fit into there. So I'm gonna take just enough metal off that I need. I'm just gonna use a Sharpie and trace around the edge here and make a cut line. But I've made a line of what I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna be using a rotary tool, a Dremel in this case, and just kind of testing how it's gonna fit in here so I can make these cuts easily. One of the other things to make it easier is I think I'm just gonna cut off this stud post and that'll give me more space uh, you see a block here. So if I cut off that stud, then I'm gonna move up this line. The cut is finished. Remove this piece of metal. Metal's not too thick, but it just takes patience and time. So we line up the holes like this, and you'll see these little uh, retainers. So it's just gonna press it flush rotate it in and it's held in place and you'll see it fits just perfectly now that's not all though we have exposed metal all over here and so i'm just gonna deburr the metal and then i bought a touch-up pen for about i don't know 12 bucks or something like that at autozone and we're just gonna treat all this uh, I've seen some people recommend they take a little bit of a rubber hose, put a slice on it, and put it around there to protect everything. As you can saw it, see before, everything's going to be held in place, so I don't really worry about the motor rubbing on this. Uh, I do want to prevent it from oxidizing and spreading. Just use a little grinding wheel, smoothed off all the edges there. Now picked up this duplicolor touch of paint. Um, I bought one that matches my paint code, but not because you need to. This is all going to be covered up in a little bit. I just have some other spots I do want to touch up. I've applied a second coat of paint. And I'm going to let that set for another half hour before I do the clear coat. In that time, I'm going to start prepping uh, to lay the wires out. It means we're going to have to remove this panel and this one and along there to run it up to the front of the car. We're gonna start by pulling this piece out. So that we can reach this bolt. <clears throat> then after that, we're gonna take off this cap and there should be two bolts behind there. We removed this one. There's a second one back in there. As you can see, it's not a spot you want to drop it. One of these extenders. I've loosened it all the way up. I'm going to grab it, twist it, take it out. I removed this 225 and the two inside there. This pulls straight out in the back. But inside here, there's this little plastic peg and it has a retainer. I just wanted to show that that part lines up right here. So really when you're removing it, you just kind of pull outward and then the lift and it'll come right off that. Uh, this plastic trim along here. So you just have weather stripping, you'll pull out of the way, get your tool inside there, and this piece should just pop downward. With this panel, we're going to have a bolt up here and you can take out this airbag patch. Well, it's not the airbag, it's just designating that it's back there because behind this is a T25 Torx. It is in there pretty tight, so I just used a very thin uh, flathead screwdriver. I just inserted it on the left-hand side, kind of pushed it over, and then worked it out like that. You can see the clips on the back. It's going to allow us to reach uh, that bolt inside there. Okay, panel's removed. Uh, the clips on this are a little bit of a different style. They're kind of a plug. So you can see, for example, this one, it came out with it. But on some others, it did not. And in some other cases, maybe somebody was in here and this one's bent. Didn't take that much force to pull it out. Just got to get it out from the weather stripping. And on this two-door model, 
uh, you'll see there were slots that the bottom of this just slides into. So it was a combination of lifting and pulling back this, or flexing this plastic piece back to remove, for example, uh, the clip. Starting to route the wiring. So I've installed the badge and the wiper motor, reconnected the wiper fluid, reconnected the electric harness under there. And now we're just starting to mock up. So here we have the power uh, for the badge. So that's tied on. This is the lead uh, that we're going to tap onto the reverse wire. And this guy, you're gonna see uh, brown is ground. This makes it the power. So the seller I got this from, I'll provide a link. I uh, made this little alligator clamp. So I'm just gonna use this to tap onto that reverse wire. And that's what's going to trigger the badge to flip and kick up the camera. Now you'll see also this seller has prepped this in a way that I can just disconnect this wire so that I don't have to try to force this through all the paneling. I can just push this wire and obviously there's going to be a ground. Just wanted to show the routing for the drain pipe. Um, so I put it there, put a loose zip tie, it's a rubber hose, you don't want to cramp it, but just have it pointing off towards the right side of the vehicle so that gravity will do its job and direct water to the drain hole there since the other two are blocked. And because we have the thick end connection there, we're going to route the powder, uh, the power cable from back to front. And to do that, uh, I've got all the wire unwound. And we're going to come inside through here, pass through this hole. And here comes the fun part of getting it through this. I will caution while not sharp, they are a little rough, these edges. So uh, when you have that routed through here, I would not recommend just pulling it. You're going to want to guide all however many feet of this it is uh, so that you don't uh, cut through the insulation and create a short. But we're going to guide this one from the inside out. So just the reverse of this, I'm going to feed it in through here, bring it up through that, bring it all the way over to our video connection. So. It's just going to take time and patience. Uh, you can kind of scrunch it up. It is rubber, so you can get a little space to massage it through. So here you can see I've fed a zip tie through. I've attached my first wire and wrapped it in a bunch of vinyl electric tape. And if it all goes according to plan, I should be able to just draw it through. Uh, this did not go according to plan, as I said, with zip ties and such. Really my advice would be, um, it's a, a, a soft rubber, so you can kind of scrunch it together like an accordion, try to move the whole thing back and forth on whichever wire you're trying to move through. Really what it got it done was a lot of patience and time, uh, but just kind of working each one of these one by one and trying to like grab it, pinch it and pull it around that. Uh, there's a bit of an angle in the rubber and then you gotta move it up. Uh, but I've done it, it can be done. Uh, just expect that to be one of the more tedious parts of this install. I am going to try to avoid having to take this whole panel out on my two door. Rather avoid if all I gotta do is just draw some wires through there. So uh, there is some space down there. Uh, this carpet we can pull out of the way. Obviously I'll have no problem running the wires to that point but now it's getting it through this whole distance. I can get the sill piece up through here. For me to get into there, I'm going to have to take out the seat bench. And we're beginning with these uh, anchors. So you can see the shape there. I found it easiest to kind of wedge your fingers in there. I kind of got both my uh, hands in there. And then you kind of lift the back towards yourself and then you can press down and it's going to slide out pretty easily. So we took off those four on the front edge, just lift firmly and it's going to 
uh, unlatch this. And so you pull firmly on both sides. Um, then there's kind of hooks sort of in this location. You can, basically you're gonna push kind of firmly backwards and lift. And there it is. So you're just trying to get this to unhook from that, uh, from this kind of metal framework. The only other thing you're gonna have to work on is you kind of reach your hand underneath and there's little just cloth pockets, you know, sort of holding these. So you just want to reach in and guide that fabric around the seat belt. I don't think it's all that necessary because I'm realizing I can reach the plastic panel pieces here and uh, get this out now, I think. I was getting really caught on these. I was led to believe it was this material you have to worry about catching, no thicker than a sleeve. No, uh, the issue is going to be this catching on the backs of the buckles. So uh, you do need to be firm and kind of push them down and try to work this around. You'll get it done on both sides here. And then out she comes. Um, this will give me more space to start pulling. From here, that means we're free to start running the cable and wires up to the front of the car. Um, my plan initially is to just go through this gap, which is going to come out down below there. Um, really, my concern is if I keep the wires taut enough, they won't vibrate, but I would like to secure them along the uh, factory wires that are running in there. Uh, this panel, uh, I've done some more research, should not, uh, famous last words in automotive jobs, uh, should not be too difficult. Uh, I have undone most of the clips around here. Uh, it is difficult right here, the upper B pillar connects, uh, just exposure, uh, connects in there. And then you can see it's kind of hard to get the piece around the seat back and have the clearance to pull it out, uh, this housing away from the speaker. The speaker stays attached to the body. And you can see, if I can angle, I've cleared enough space where I can reach through here pretty easily uh, and at least just guide the wires down uh, and hopefully pick it up right here. Get another one over here. Uh, on the back, I started pulling from here. I believe there's one, two, three uh, clips along here. So that's how you can get that space. What that's going to afford you is this gap, uh, large enough to get your arm in. I'll see if I can give a view in here. I've started with my video cable. I've yet to feed all the slack through. Just wanted to get it started. But we're gonna see that coming through there, I just wanna follow the factory wires. This way I know I'll avoid any pinch points. So this is padding around the seat belt, this carpet. You can just flex out of the way and you can see I'm gonna follow it under there and bring it out behind the seat belt. This is a tool that I bought, I think in an auto zone, but I wanted to show this. So I just grabbed it with the claw like that. And then I used this, let me get a wider angle, to just push it down and through. They tell you to disconnect the negative battery strap. Reason being is bright yellow means airbags. Um, I'm getting in and out of the car and sitting on uh, this carpeting material. You can pick up a static charge. Uh, you can touch grounded metal to make sure that you're discharged. My cables are going to be running next to that. So just do be careful that uh, you don't pull too hard on that. There's six clips. One, two, three, four, five, six. The little disc that slides in. There's no way you're going to get that disc in any other way than that. So if any have remained in the body when you loosened it, you are going to have to remove this panel. The thing that I ended up finding the most challenging was this. Didn't really understand that there's a foot, so you have the B pillar, and then there's a foot inside here that's wedged like that. So you have to be able to slide it, lift it out. And that was really the main thing, uh, keeping it in there. This is the tweeter. There's just a little clip, pinch on both sides, slide that out. It's gonna be a lot easier to secure uh, our wires. Just lift the carpet and ran it under the rail all the way through. Um, 
the OEM, the factory wire harness, is underneath this sound deadening. Um, but I think there's a nice happy little home here. The whole way you can just reach under and tuck it in. So I just kind of flip the carpet back, work it all the way through, and then it's gonna pop out on that side. I just put my pry tool in there, twist and this pops out. Uh, not even any clips, just these little plastic wedges. Uh, the first thing you'll have to do is remove the hood release lever. Now to do that, on the side that's towards the front of the car, further from you, you're gonna reach a flathead screwdriver inside and twist. So it's just this clip is gonna pop out and then it lets the lever just slide right off. They decided to use a plastic screw. Uh, so this was there. And on top of that screw head, you can see for a flat head, there was a cap. And that's all that's holding this panel. So I can just kind of lift here, it'll wedge out from the dead pedal. Underneath your dash, there's going to be two uh, T20 uh, Torx screws to remove. Uh, they will come from here and another over here. After that, this guy's just gonna pluck right out. Now we've got space to run it over to our head unit. You can see I've installed an RCD 330. Um, this gives me Apple CarPlay and all the rest, as well as a screen for the reverse camera we're installing. So you get inside there, uh, first start off with a pry tool, work around the edges. Uh, this piece is part of it, but a little loose. Um, do be gentle, just uh, find a way in and then just work your way around and it's gonna pop right out. Uh, some cars have automatic uh, lights, that's where the sensor would be if it were equipped with that, so just know you might have a wiring harness there. Set that aside. Inside, we're gonna find a T20 uh, Torx screw. Now, this plastic is particularly brittle. Uh, this is actually my second take because I was explaining how brittle it was while pulling here, and out she came. Not too concerned, it looks like it's mostly there just to retain the air going out of that top vent if you have this equipped on yours. I might super glue it, I might say who cares and move on. Uh, better practice would be to use your uh, trim removal tool, work from the back, kind of pulling it towards yourself, and it's gonna come up. When I installed the head unit, this is definitely one where I lost uh, a clip or two. Again, this is particularly brittle plastic, so do be careful with it. Once we're inside, we're gonna find two more T20s. Uh, hard for me to orient. <laughs> so another T20 and another T20. This guy's loose now. The way I did it was, um, I used this kind of hook one. Each of these three slots are hooked on, so I'm just gonna use this to get each of those three loose. Do be mindful, this is uh, pretty thin and brittle plastic again, so try to be delicate, but you will need some force. So again, begin with pulling the back up. Then on the front, I kind of held here while applying upward pressure. And you can see those teeth I was talking about. Uh, use the trim tool around here and just kind of insert and twist and just work my way around in here, along there and this now will lift straight up. Um, inside you have your uh, airbag light. Not necessary to disconnect, you can if you choose. I don't choose. I'm just gonna slide this guy over on the side. And from here, uh, we have two more torque screws. And then this outer fascia is going to be another piece of brittle plastic. All right, have this piece off. Uh, again, just want to show that process. You'll remove two torques and then just kind of wedge along the side and gently insert and twist it to pull along. And I'll show you the locations of where these clips are on the back. So this is reversed, but you can see two on the sides, four on the bottom. And the reason why you need to be more delicate with these is because the way they're mounted, here's one who broke. Uh, they're on these little plastic uh, pegs and the way they come from the factory is they just uh, lens, just melt the plastic onto it. 
Um, so obviously that's very easy to break off. But again, you can see if one were to be lost, it's not going to be the end of the world. But now that you know the locations of each, that's where I would recommend putting in your uh, trim removal tool. From here, uh, the only thing uh, holding in are four more torque screws on each side and the whole unit will just slide out. On the back, you're gonna have uh, this channel block. These work uh, quite simply. There's this lever, you'll see pinch, pull, and this is gonna pivot up and release it so that it'll just slide right out. Um, what you will see different on my car is um, this adapter that I got from the seller. Again, I'll try to remember to put in a link in the description. Uh, but this allows my steering wheel controls to operate it as well as for my year of Mark V. Uh, you need to worry about battery drain depending on your uh, CAN bus control module. Uh, this will eliminate that so that when the car is off, it's not going to drain the battery out. Um, so that's why this is here. This is the otherwise the stock part, but same idea. Um, also, I've installed again from the seller a rear USB. So that's here. So I just ran it down behind the dash and uh, gives me my USB connection down here in front of the shifter. And this is the uh, radio antenna adapter. Stock is two. So it's giving you a two into one uh, for your radio. Each of the clips are gonna be simple. You can see that. There's just a little press on that tab and it's going to slide right out. Same thing with this USB. I'm bringing the wire uh, across the dash. Again, I have found this tool uh, quite valuable because of uh, flexibility and the grabber on the end. I brought a video cable you can see through there, through that hole. And then routed it up through here into the fuse box. From here, I grabbed onto it with my uh, grabber and I'm routing it through the dash. If you put the steering wheel all the way up in the adjustment, you can see this gap underneath so that I was able to get it through. So I'm gonna release it here and continue my path up into there. So here's the blue uh, block that's going to insert into that position. And you'll see that the seller has uh, put an adapter on here. So this piece is going to plug into this. Now here's our colors again. Uh, black for ground, red for power. These orange ones are your CAN bus. So that's what I was describing earlier. You know, these little alligator clamps, I believe they're called, I'm no electrician, but I have read the internet. So, um, You'll see that they're labeled positive and the other one's negative. So you're just going to trace those wires into the contact that they line up with. And I'm going to uh, install those onto these orange wires there. Uh, this is what's going to give you the uh, guidance and when you turn the steering wheel, it'll show you the predictive path. Uh, and again, we find which is positive and negative on the label right there. So again, positive is the orange with that purple stripe. And the negative is the orange with the yellow dots. And we have those lined up inside. And now these red and black wires, I'm going to bring back across the dash into the fuse box. And we have a wire tap. And the seller has also made it easy again by letting me pull these apart so I don't have to route the pigtail itself in. Here we've inserted that grabber tool up through the dash and grabbed both my wires. And I'm going to pull them on through. And we're continuing through the dash. So we inserted through there, grab the wires, pull through. Here is one of the things that gave me the most concern is which fuses to tap. Um, now, 
the important thing is remember our power lead that goes to the uh, latch, the badge in the back. Um, remember, that's how you activate your uh, latch release. So it needs to have power always, not just when the ignition is on. So it needs to be unswitched. Now, again, I am not a professional. Don't take my word on everything. Do your due diligence and do research on this. Um, I might give a link, but um, I just bought a simple little tool, three, five dollars at Harbor Freight. You can touch each of the leads there and find which of these are uh, unswitched, meaning constant power, and which are only on when your ignition is turned. Um, now this row, I uh, installed the power for that. Now I had two grounds. Uh, this, I uh, just backed that out and put the ground behind there. Now when grounding, you always need bare, unpainted metal. The whole chassis is grounded. Um, so I used that one and I put another one back behind this bolt, uh, just holding it here against the metal. This is for the camera and I have tapped the reverse wire. Really what I wanna see, I just plugged it in, I haven't reinstalled it. Let's see if I can get my reverse badge to work. That's a good sign. And let's keep it quiet. All right, here she goes. First time. I heard it. Oh. And I have predictive steering. All right, pretty proud of myself. Everything works. And uh, I guess it's just time to button her back up. All right, just wanted to show how I'm zip tying. So uh, just using these tiny little ones I've got and securing this lead wire uh, along here. And then I took the power cable and the video cable. You can see I found another style of zip tie like this, uh, which are designed to fit into uh, little holes like that. And so I used a couple of those and some factory holes that I found and put the power of the video and this lead wire all together through it. Same thing here, found another hole. Uh, secured this here to prevent this from rattling. I uh, just kind of looped the extra lead wire here and here was another hole that I was able to use. From here I just started connecting to the existing wiring harness that was already there, just tracing it down. The video cable comes in and obviously connects to the camera. Uh, I did not realize it connects to the camera itself, not a harness. So what happens is when that camera uh, motor pulls or pushes the camera out, it's going to move this wire and you need to make sure that you leave enough slack, otherwise it will pull itself right out. You can see uh, added a zip tie, I don't know, just every foot or two. Um, got one there. Didn't feel like cutting through the tape, just zip tied there. So inside here, you can see I just gathered up the rest, zip tied it together. It's got a nice little home up top there. Um, because I wanna be the change I wish to see in the world, uh, for the next owner, or in case I forget, I've labeled each of the wires, simply just wrapped a little tape around, video power, latch power, video cable. Uh, the latch has an inline fuse. So I just taped that back there to the side. Uh, in case that were to, for some reason, blow, uh, they'll know where to find that. Now, in terms of wrangling the cable, you can see it goes through here and comes out on the bottom. I found two little happy homes for these. Uh, the extra power, I think, can live back here. Uh, extra power wire. So that'll sit inside there. And then the video uh, is just resting on top of this wiring harness uh, up in here. Uh, there's no pinch points on the back of this cover. Uh, you'll remember it just attaches with the handle and a little plastic screw here. So that's just gonna slide in with that. And you'll see that'll be a perfect little place to protect it and reach it if for some reason we should need to. So that's it.